This is going to be the easiest way to make a clean commercial headshot look with a white background with just one light. My name is Vanessa Joy. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer and a Canon explorer of light. Now, I love a full studio headshot. Absolutely. It's a nice clean way to get gorgeous images and really hone in on the light. But sometimes either I just don't have that much space to have other lights or I want a nice easy way to carry all of my equipment with a very simple setup time. And that's what I want to show you today. I want to show you how I set up a one light headshot setup for that clean commercial background that, well, realtors like I'm photographing now are going to love. In order to get this headshot lighting right, you have to have enough distance between your subject and the background, which ideally are somewhat close together, and your light. Think inverse square law, or you know, maybe Google inverse square law. It's all about positioning the light relative to your subject. The farther away the light is to your subject, the less difference you're going to see on the exposure of their face as opposed to the exposure of the background. Now that explains the lighting exposure on your subject versus the background, which is one key to this, but the second key is having a nice soft light for a couple of reasons. One, a nice soft light is going to be very flattering to your subject. It's not going to create much shadows, but since we're going for a clean commercial look, it's going to help eliminate fine lines and wrinkles. It's going to keep the eyes nice and bright, but it's also going to negate the shadow that might show up on the background. Now it may or may not totally take it away and that's where light positioning comes into place. But when you have a nice soft lighting setup and a soft light is a big light relative to your subject. So I have the Profoto Deep Umbrella. It's a translucent umbrella. I'm using a shoot through. This is their extra large umbrella. And I also have the diffuser on it. Having the light be really large is going to create that soft light. And it's also going to let that light still be soft as I move it further away from my subject in the background. This lighting setup needs both of those things. It needs a really large, soft light, but it also needs one that's far away from your subject and the background. The farther away the light is from your subject in the background, the more even the exposure will be on the subject in the background, which is what we want because we want that background to be nice and white. So the big soft light definitely helps. I'm using a Profoto B10. This is a nice, powerful light, which is necessary depending on the light in the space and what you have to overcome in the space. Now, I did not totally black out my exposure here. I got pretty close, but because I really was also filling in the light with the natural light that was coming from the window behind me, I didn't need to fully black out my exposure. For these headshots, I like using the 85 millimeter lens. This is the Canon RF 85 millimeter 1.2 lens. And when you're photographing headshots, I do recommend 85 or longer focal length. This is just going to be more flattering on the face typically, although there is something to be said about photographing with like a 50 millimeter. Maybe if your subject doesn't like their cheekbones or they think their forehead is too big and you can sort of mess around with the way that the lens compresses or decompresses the optical illusion of the photograph in order to accentuate or decentuate certain parts of their body. But personally, I love the 85 millimeter. If you have a 7200, that's great. If you have enough room for using maybe the Canon RF 135, 1.8, that's fantastic too. I'm using my Canon R5, which is definitely my favorite camera for headshots. I like having a nice, big megapixel count on headshots because you never know what they're going to use these for. They might put this on a billboard, which is definitely something I see realtors do, or you know, they might just throw it on Instagram or their website. Either way, I want to give them the opportunity to work with both. So I'm gonna shoot with my R5 so I have a nice big file size for them. My ISO is at 320, aperture 2.5, which arguably you may or may not want to do this, but for headshots, 
I really like just the eyes in focus. I don't need her ears or his ears in focus. I don't need, you know, the hand that's on my subject's hip in focus. I really just want to hone in on the eyes. That's a subjectivity thing though. You could definitely shoot headshots at 7.1 and get everything in focus, but this is my personal style and how I like it. My shutter is at 1 200th of a second to block out as much ambient light as possible. And my ISO being a little bit lower helps do that as well. I mentioned I'm mixing both ambient light, which is daylight coming through the window and my flash, but that's okay because my flash is at 5600, which is the color of daylight. So you're not going to see any color mixing happening here. I also made sure to turn off the lights in the room so that it wasn't mixing the tungsten lights with my flash and the ambient light. Now that you would see and it would look absolutely horrible. So the photos that you see here, we have a nice white background, but I will admit it's not 100% white. I mean, technically according to the math, it would take quite a distance to create that absolutely pure stark white based on inverse square law, but let me show you what you can do next. I'm gonna go ahead into Evoto, and this is a really phenomenal retouching, editing program, and I'm actually only using JPEGs. I did have all these photos processed from the raw files to JPEGs through Freedom Edits, but I decided to do the retouching with Evoto. Evoto is a phenomenal program, not just for retouching, but for batch retouching and group retouching. I've only just started using this program, but it's extremely simple to use, especially with the presets that they already have. I just pull in my JPEG photos, you can pull in RAWs as well, and make a selection based on what I like as their presets go, and then I can adjust it. But here's the powerful part. Once you get to a style of retouching that you like, maybe you don't like to reshape the face, or maybe you want a little bit more fill for the dark circles under their eyes. Once you get that, you can then save your preset for one, but you can also sync it across all of the other photos. You can go through one by one and tweak from there, but that's what's so powerful about this. I've edited full wedding albums on this. And when you go to sync those settings, when you go to sync them, not only do you sync and edit across the photos, but for every face in the photo. So all my bridesmaids faces retouched every photo in the album retouched all the family photos retouched in literally seconds. I cannot say enough about this program. You can go crazy. Don't go crazy. I don't recommend going crazy with the retouching, but it's a really easy way to retouch. And then for photos like this, if I want to go for that super stark, absolutely not a single detail pixel behind them, it has background retouching. And because I've already shot this very clean, it's very easy for the program through AI to recognize the white background and then make it stark white or make whatever color you want to. You know, a lot of companies want different colors on the background, and this is a really easy way to do it and create a consistent consistency across the board, maybe across different shoots that you're doing in different locations, different photographers. I can't say enough about this program. Definitely check it out. There is a link in the description and I'm sure I'm going to put a link on the bottom of the screen right here so you can access them. I can't say enough about it. It just made retouching so easy and honestly, I retouch more now than I used to because it's so easy. Anyway, that's how I do all the retouching. Let me know what you think of this one light headshot setup for a clean commercial look. I think it's pretty easy, but the key to the setup part being you black out your exposure as much as possible using a low ISO. We need a powerful light here. My light was probably all the way around eight or nine plain background, your subject fairly close to the background and your light as far away from your subject in your background as you can possibly get and having a really big light source. So a nice big umbrella. I wouldn't do this with the softbox, I would probably stick with the umbrella. And then the shoot through was really one of my favorites because in addition to the nice soft light shooting through the umbrella, in addition, it's bouncing off the umbrella back onto the diffuser, going through the diffuser and bouncing off of your environment back onto your subject. Now you could take that diffuser off if you wanted to, and then it's going to bounce and the light and maybe the color of your environment is going to bounce back onto your subject, which if you like the color of your environment, that's kind of a good thing because it just makes the light look a little bit more natural and like it's coming from your environment. But if you don't want that, then the diffuser is helpful because it's just going to minimize the bounce back off of your environment onto your subject. So that is what I did here. Had the diffuser on. I just think it's a beautiful soft light. And then, you know, if you need that super stark white background, it's an easy edit in Evoto. I'm Vanessa Joy. Hit like, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll see you next time.